Okay, so that's how to run a parametric sweep. You add a global parameter, you use that parameter to drive any part of the um, model, including the geometry or any physical boundary conditions, or even mesh nodes, uh, mesh density, and then you can compute and then compare the results. Um, I do want to show you the very last step was uh, converting from model to an app. I won't go into too much details here because I think we are getting uh, closer with time. So uh, I have 14 more minutes, right? To 10.55? Okay. Um, so what I'll do is I will show you um, app building 101 or even 000. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pick one model that's already built and solved in console in the, um, let's see. Well, so first of all, where to, how to, how to get here. Uh, when you, after you install the trial console, go to file application library. Here's the collection of examples we have built with each of the module. So before you want to build a molecular flow ex uh, problem, don't do it yet. Go into one of the example, open the PDF. Each of the example comes with a PDF, including a background introduction of that particular example, plus some uh, meaningful results and analysis, plus a step-by-step -step instruction of how this model was built. So duplicate a couple of them, uh, just to familiarize yourself with the workflow and where to find out different options, where hopefully there is even an example that's similar to exactly what you want to do, and then make changes on that and start building your own model. So what I'll use right here, um, well, so first of all, before you attend the Wednesday's class, I would strongly recommend you to go through the console multiphysics, which is the base package and the equation-based examples here. So some of those, Tammy will be explaining a lot more details, but it doesn't hurt to just uh, have a preview of those. So right now, to demonstrate the uh, app building, I'm going to use one under multiphysics, and it's called the bus bar. Um, I'm going to open that uh, model. If you do want to know how to build this bus bar, which is another dual heating problem, that's intro booklet. Uh, there are two examples you can work through, again, step-by-step -step instructions. The second one is this bus bar one. Um, I mentioned that this example, although it's electrical and heat transfer so far, it can easily become a fluid flow problem because you can add a surrounding box and introduce convective cooling, which is a lot of times happens in especially an older generation laptop when you have a fan inside that helps you have the cooling uh, of the actual co components. So um, you can add fluid flow on top of that. That's what I mean. Um, so here is the working model. Again, it's solved. It has colorful images. It's the actual current plus heat transfer. I want to use this one because it already has a um, defined parameter list that controls the uh, different parts of the model. So how do I convert this from this model to an app? Uh, if you're using Windows, uh, and uh, you have the console ribbon on the top, and you'll see the first button here is called Application Builder. Hit the Application Builder button. Now you are switched from Model Builder to Application Builder. There is a button to switch you back, again, on the Home tab, the first tab here. So the two key concepts here I want to introduce is a new form and a new method. A new form is essentially the layout of your user-defined app. So you add a new form. You tell console what you want to include on that uh, front panel. It's like lab view for those of you who know. Um, so for example, I want the, my user to be able to change a few parameters. I want them to be able to see what is the temperature plot. I want to give them some buttons, for example, a compute button. So that's it. So that's the layout of uh, the, the app. I could move things around. It's essentially a PowerPoint. I could resize the uh, graphics window. And then when you hit test application, it'll just work. You could either run it after a console license or console server license. The demo.console.com link I gave earlier allows you to upload and run apps so you can, anywhere you are, as long, as long as you have internet access, you don't have to use a Windows machine to run an app. Any platform, including your iPhone, would be able to run an app. So you can just log into that website, um, either upload or if you already saved it out, then you can just hit compute, change one of the parameters, it'll work and it'll give you the results. Uh, this is not, uh, well, this is the very simple version of it. Uh, you can also add a, a method. So method is essentially your JavaScript um, environment. So um, I myself don't know any Java, so how am I going to demonstrate to you? I'm going to record a code. So now everything here shows in, uh, you know, a, a round box, a red box. So I'm going to switch back to model builder. Say if I change any part of the model, 
from 6 to 8. I'll do something else. Change the mesh to user defined, build a mesh. And I could uh, stop recording, go back to my app builder. Everything I did will be recorded as a JavaScript. So, you know, at least you know where to go. And now you've, instead of 8, I'm smart enough to know, you know, I can change that 8 into a different parameter and that'll still work. So, um, and then on top of that, you can add more things. So, um, I'll show you one example that everybody knows, and the, the beauty of it is actually play some sound. So I'm going to find, yeah, so every application, so the ones with the app interface is uh, in the application folder. Each of the module has an application folder. So uh, the ACDC example with the app interface, that's actually in that folder. So I'm going to show you a tuning fork. Directly hit run app. Don't save the change. So this is a tuning fork app. It runs in two modes. You can tell console how long the tuning app, uh, uh, tuning fork uh, uh, forks are, uh, the prone length, and the heat compute is going to tell you the natural frequency. So that is what a um, uh, 455.6 hertz sounds like. The other mode it works on is actually a combination of structural mechanics and optimization. So I want to, I mean the um, you know, maybe a, next to a 3D printer, I want to say, I want a, a 50, 90, a 490 hertz. Tell me how long that the prone length should be. It's going to take slightly longer because of the optimization algorithm here. And by the way, to add that optimization, it's literally one expression in one step of the solver. It's not complicated at all. Slightly higher pitch, so if you have good ears, you can tell the difference between 450 and 490. So, or if you are tuning your violin, you can maybe use the app as well. Um, all right, so that's the very last step here, from the model to the app. Uh, so, app is essentially a model plus a user interface, and by user interface, we mean not only just the uh, front cover of it, like that view, but also the back wires, uh, what makes the buttons work. So, you can associate different commands with the different buttons trigger them to do different things. So the app builder is only included in Windows because it so far uses uh, uh, the Windows native uh, technology. Um, but once you have the app, as I said, you can run across all the different uh, smart devices. Um, so the server I mentioned, um, so once you log in, it's actually um, nothing you need to set up. So you basically, I've set you to be the user authority, so you can uh, run any of the apps that's been uploaded out. We use them for workshop demos a lot of times. Uh, you can upload your own, and then you can run your own um, apps from now. So for show and tell, right? OK, so um, next thing, I just want to say a few quick words about, uh, we'll show you some colorful images to, uh, before the end of the presentation. Um, so for the electrical category, uh, the ACDC module, as I mentioned, does the lower frequency or even stationary and transient problems. So when you simulate, you know, I know you are from different engineering courses. So when you're simulating like uh, conductors, uh, resistors, uh, inductors, uh, capacitors, calculate capacitances, uh, then you can or the uh, transformers, uh, you know, generators, then you can use the ACDC module. Uh, anything that's involving the full Maxwell equation, so the wave propagation, that is the RF module. Uh, when you have the, um, you know, when the system size, the simulation domain size is much larger than the wavelength, computational effort goes up very, very quickly. So usually the rule of thumb is you have your 10 wavelengths by 10 wavelengths by 10 wavelengths in 3D uh, for the uh, full Maxwell equation. You probably want to have a machine with a 64 gigabit memory or more. Um, so um, basically it scales uh, very quickly because for each of the wavelengths you want to have at least five quadratic elements. Um, so uh, when you go beyond that system size, you use an alternative approach, either beam envelope method, a slow invariant beam capturing the wave uh, with the factoring, uh, uh, factoring, um, faster wave uh, in, the, in each of the wavelengths, uh, or the uh, ray tracing um, uh, technique in the ray optics module. Um, plasma module that works on all the different dimensions, uh, then, and then you can couple with the existing coil uh, designs as well. Um, it basically covers the uh, ICP, the inductively coupled uh, plasma, CCP, the capacitively coupled microwave plasma, and also the DC discharge uh, plasma as well. So the low temperature, uh, 9 kilograms uh, plasma type. 
And then the math module I mentioned is uh, basically a combined capability from the ACDC and structural plus the unique electromechanics interface. So some of the examples here are antenna uh, communications on the airplane and also in the windshield wiper uh, in the car. And uh, yeah, this example is actually a quite a popular one called thermal lensing. Uh, so we have ray tracing, but the lens actually expands because of thermal effects. Then you have that the shift of the focal. Uh, then the mechanical branch, uh, so the, uh, uh, no matter what dimension it is, you can have the 1D beam and truss network, or you can have the 2D membrane with shells, you can have a 3D solid, or a combination of those materials. You can, as long as they are linear materials, you can use structural mechanics model for it. Then the different, uh, you know, non-linearity we mentioned is in the non-linear structural materials model. Uh, I do want to emphasize that if you do deal with piezoelectric uh, actuation in any of the cases, then the structural mechanics model can deal with any type of orientations of the uh, piezoelectric. Uh, a reinforced concrete beam in picture number one. Uh, and uh, let's see what else. A fluid structure interaction one in that uh, satellite panel. So basically, that's another predefined uh, coupling facing console, which saw fluid flow and solid mechanics and the moving mesh mechanism, the arbitrary log around the Eulerian method, uh, the moving mesh uh, in console. Uh, there's also, comparing to the moving mesh, there's also something called the deformed geometry. The difference is that moving mesh captures the same material frame, which means that there's no addition or removal of material to introduce that uh, shape change. You're literally deforming certain existing fixed mass geometry. But when you have, a, uh, for example, an uh, electro deposition or corrosion problem, then that's a deformed geometry because you're adding materials or moving materials or some growth of materials. Um, I don't know if you have uh, so far in the lecture covered the level set and the phase field methods yet. Um, so basically when you have, uh, well, I'll talk about it in the next slide actually. Uh, when you have uh, a two-phase flow, if you want to track where the interface, the um, uh, surface tension induced and the uh, momentum induced the, uh, the, the shape change of the meniscus, then you could use either the level set or phase field method, which is essentially another set or two additional uh, dependent variables on top of the navier stokes equation. And uh, the uh, additional parameter, basically, when it's larger than 0.5, it's one phase. Lower than 0.5, it's another phase. And it's a diffused in phase. Uh, as opposed to the third method in tracking the in phase is the, the moving mesh method, which you have an accurate mesh. So the level set and phase field solved on a fixed mesh. And the moving mesh actually disturbs the uh, perturbs the mesh nodes. Uh, the limitation of moving mesh is that you cannot merge or split the nodes. You cannot make nodes disappear. Um, so basically, if you have a droplet uh, merging or breaking uh, problem, then you cannot use the moving mesh, but the other two methods will still work. Uh, they have different other concepts in terms of the, uh, solving other types of physics as well. Um, so the just want to briefly talk about examples here. The first one is the uh, heated floor, so it uses the uh, uh, pipe flow module for the non-isothermal pipe flow. The pipe flow can actually do pipe acoustics as well, and you can specify different pipe cross-section shapes and uh, geometries. Um, heat transfer, so that's a heat and tube uh, exchanger uh, that you can have uh, uh, the because both the heat transfer part and fluid part are based on fan magnet. So the flux calculation is most accurate, and the coupling is the uh, most accurate as well. So some thin layer conditions you use in your in your heat sink. Um, so that's the uh, corrosion and the uh, plating that I mentioned. So that's the electrochemistry on top of the uh, deformed geometry, um, you know, uh, for the for the mesh, and then uh, some surface reaction and uh, duct curves for the surface photometry. Um, so I do want to quickly mention that optimization module, a lot of times people use in uh, two different scenarios. One is called the shape optimization. Uh, that's the top one, which is actually acoustics problem with straight walls on the horn in the beginning. And then you allow five uh, points, physical points, to move on that boundary to make the corrugated shape uh, to get a maximum sound effect. So um, again, you cannot have mesh nodes crossing each other, so you'll end up with the same topology. You won't go from a sphere to a donut. If you do want to go from a sphere to a donut with any number of holes, you use the topology optimization uh, that basically just specify what's the bounding box and you can have shaded material anywhere. All right, I think, um, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So just want to emphasize the resources that you can use.